Hello, my name is Oscar Branson. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Earth Sciences here at Cambridge, and today I'm going to tell you about shells. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with shells, whether you found them on the beach, in your lunch, or even in a museum. They're beautiful, complex structures that have underpinned economies as early currencies and inspired artists and collectors throughout the centuries. But in the Earth Sciences, shells take on a whole new dimension. By studying them through the combined lenses of biology, chemistry, physics and geology, we're able to read the complex history of Earth's climate from fossil shells, as well as understand the vital role that shells will play in determining future climate change in a high CO2 world. First, let's have a look at how we can use shells to understand past climates. Now, the superstars here are foraminifera. These unicellular amoeba-like organisms are found throughout the surface and deep ocean and produce these microscopic, intricate shells made out of calcium carbonate. Now, as these shells form, they incorporate trace impurities into their structure, and the amount of these impurities can tell you about the environment that that shell formed in. For example, the concentration of magnesium in a shell is controlled by the physics of crystal growth. At higher temperatures, you can get more magnesium into the crystal structure than at low temperatures, which means that by knowing the concentration of magnesium in a calcium carbonate shell, you can work out what temperature it formed at. We know about these patterns because we go out and measure them. To study foraminifera, you have to go to where they live, the open ocean. But finding them is only half the battle, because then you have to catch them. Foraminifera are so delicate that the most reliable way to catch them for experiments is by hand as a scuba diver. Once you've caught them, you take them back to the lab to identify them, feed them, and then grow them in precisely controlled conditions to establish these relationships that we use to understand past climates. And once we have these relationships, we apply them to long-dead foraminifera. Foraminifera that over millions of years have built up in marine sediments such as this one. So this is a sediment core, like a set of apple core extracted from sediments in the deep ocean. But you can see all of these layers building up through time, where each layer contains sets of foraminifera that you can take out, analyse their composition and work out what the environment was like when they were alive. And this approach has proved spectacularly useful for understanding how Earth's climate system works. For example, by providing records of ocean temperature going back hundreds of millions of years, or even records of atmospheric CO2 going back tens of millions of years. Now, in combination, this type of information becomes invaluable for understanding current climate change, where we're trying to estimate how much the world will warm in response to a large release of CO2. Now, this brings us back to the other reason we care about shells in Earth sciences, which is future carbon and climate change. Now, carbon and the ocean have quite a complicated relationship, but the main thing to notice here is that shells are an important part of it. So in predicting how CO2 in the atmosphere will change in future and how climate will change in future, understanding how these shells respond to increased CO2 levels is vital. Now, unfortunately, this is far from straightforward, and people have done a lot of work in a lot of different organisms and found a wide variety of resp responses to elevated CO2 in the ocean. For example, in things like pteropods, these little marine snails, we're already seeing signs of dissolution in the surface ocean in high latitudes. Whereas for things like coccolithophores, if you grow them at high CO2, they seem to do better and produce more shells at high CO2. So with this diversity of responses within marine calcifiers, it's really difficult to predict how the whole system will respond to climate change. This type of problem is particularly pertinent to complex environments like coral reefs some of the largest living structures on the planet, which are actually formed by a wide range of different shell and skeleton forming organisms. Now, reefs are hugely important environments. They're biodiversity hotspots, nurseries for fish stocks, and provide tourism and economic benefits to a range of coastal communities. We need to understand the resilience of these complex systems to future climate change, but to do that, we must delve into the detailed responses of individual shell forming organisms that make up that reef. And this is exactly the type of question we can begin to answer in Earth Sciences, by combining biology, chemistry and physics across temporal and spatial scales, we can begin to answer fundamental questions about the past, present and future of our planet.